Imagine that using Noteport service type, you expose your web app to outside world on the internet. And there are multiple web app instances are deployed and distributed across multiple nodes inside your Kubernetes cluster. Problem here is, so to access this web app, you need to provide node IP and node port to end users. So which node IP and node port will you provide to end users? Hello and welcome to Load Balancer Service Type. My name is Srinath Challa. I'm a certified Kubernetes administrator. So in the next few minutes, I'll try my best to explain what is Load Balancer, what it does, and show you how do we expose your web app from your Kubernetes cluster onto the internet using Load Balancer. But before you watch this video, it is good to have a basic understanding of what are services, Noteport service type, and kubectl. In case if you need a help with that, please do check the links in the description below. So without any further delay, let's take a look at the things you'll be learning as part of this video. This presentation is divided into two parts. In part one, we'll discuss the concept around load balancer. Before we discuss what is a load balancer, we'll discuss why we need it in first place. Then we'll go through the overview of load balancer. So that's about the part one. Now coming to the part two, we'll review the load balancer demo we are about to perform live on Kubernetes cluster in advance. So this will help you better understand when you watch actually doing it live. In this review demo, I'll show you what goes inside the load balancer manifest file. Then we'll create the load balancer and we'll display and validate the objects it has created. After that, we'll test the use cases of load balancer by making sure it is working as it should be. Finally, we'll clean up what we have created. In case if you are looking for actual load balancer demo performing above steps on live Kubernetes cluster, then you can refer to the link provided in the description below. And now let's get started with why we need load balancer. Here is one of the scenario that we saw in Noteport video, where we have a multiple instances of pods that are deployed on multiple nodes. In this case, it is three nodes. Problem with this setup here is to access this app, we can use any of the public IP of the node and the node port. So let me ask you a couple of questions here. So if you had to provide access to the end users, which node IP will you provide? Next, are these end users comfortable using IP and port numbers to access this app? And finally, how is the traffic balanced equally among all nodes inside the cluster? That's where load balancer comes into the picture. So what is a load balancer? Load balancer service is the standard go-to solution if you want to expose your app onto the internet. For example, let's say that if you have all your setup on cloud, such as Google Cloud, AWS, or Azure, then once you create the service of type load balancer, it will automatically create the load balancer in the backend and generates public IP address for you. Once that is done, you can use that public IP address, which will forward all the traffic to your service. And you can send HTTP, TCP, UDP, and all different kinds of traffic. Also, please do make sure you need to think twice before you create load balancers because they are not cheap. So every time you create a service of type load balancer, it will cost you dollars. It can get expensive. And there is a solution to address this. And it is called as ingress. Ingress is altogether a different topic, but will restrict to load balancer in this video. So that's about the load balancer. Now let's move on to the next section in this video. And that is review demo. In next few slides, we'll review the demo we are able to perform on the system. First, we'll see what goes inside the load balancer manifest file. Then we'll create the load balancer service. After that, we'll display and validate load balancer to make sure it is created as per our expectations. And finally, we'll clean up the things we have created in this demo. And now let's start with writing the manifest file 
for load balancer. And now coming to the writing of manifest file for load balancer. So the requirement here is to expose the app on the internet. This time we'll use the load balancer service type to get all its advantages that we discussed. So just like any other Kubernetes object spec file, load balancer service file contains the same four top sections. They are API version, kind, metadata, and spec. Service is part of initial stable release. So the API version for this is v1. The kind of object we are creating here is service. Next, we define the name of this service under metadata. In our example, the service name is my service. Next, we can provide the labels to this service if needed. This is completely optional. For simplicity purpose, we are using the same labels as pod labels. And now comes the spec section. This is where all core part lies. Here in this spec section contains the three important things. They are selector, type, and ports. First, selector. The purpose of selector is to define the way service selects the pods that it needs to manage. And this is all possible using pod labels. So we include exact pod labels under the selector. Next comes the type. Here the type of the service we are creating here is load balancer. So we have the load balancer here. Finally, we come to the port section. It primarily consists of three ports. First one is node port. You can define the node port manually here or Kubernetes will allocate one of the port from 30,000 to 32,767 in that range. Currently, we assign 31,000 as a node port. Second port is port on the service. This is a mandatory port that you need to define. Finally, we have the target port. This target port is a port on the target container where the service is running. Generally, the port and the target port will be the same numbers. That is it. Now, we need to create the service. We can do that by running kubectl create command. And let's see that in next slide. First, we need to create the deployment by running kubectl create followed by iPhone F option and the manifest file. Once the deployment is created, then to expose the app to outside world, for that we need a service. In this case, we are using load balancer service type. So to create the load balancer service, we can do that by running kubectl create command with iPhone F option and the manifest file. So from the above two outputs, we have successfully created deployment and load balancer service. So to make sure, let's display the service. We can do that by kubectl get service. So that will print all the services running inside the Kubernetes cluster. So to restrict, we will limit that by filtering the services whose labels are with app equal to nginx app. As you can see, there is one service which is of type load balancer. Also, you can see the cluster IP, which is a service IP internal to the cluster. And we are waiting for the external IP. And it will take about few minutes to get the external IP. After a few minutes, we will rerun the same command in the next slide. It will take about few minutes for cloud providers to create load balancer and generate public IP address for you. So after a few minutes, let's rerun the same command and then you can see the external IP through which you can access the service. And here is a screenshot where you can access the external IP and the status says, OK. You can access this screen by going to the Kubernetes and then networking in Google Cloud. And now let's print the complete details of this load balancer using kubectl describe command in next slide. So to print the complete details, you'll use the kubectl describe service followed by service name to print the complete details of load balancer service, which we just created. As you can see, the type of service here is load balancer. You can also see the service IP, external IP and endpoint IP. Here, endpoint IP is the pod IP. 
It includes the respective ports as well. In case if you have watched my node port video, where I explain what each of this port does. At the end, you will see the list of the events. This command comes very handy during troubleshooting. So that's all about creating load balancer service in Kubernetes. And now let's access this app using external IP in next slide. Just to make sure, let's get the load balancer IP from the kubectl described command. In our example, external IP is 104.198.43.137. Now you can open any web browser and enter this IP address. This IP is publicly routable on the internet. If you have configured everything correctly, you should see the default web page like this. So this is how we create the load balancer service type and access the web app from online. With this, we came to the almost end of this video. But there is just one cleanup task to be done, which we'll be doing in next slide. There are two objects that we have created in this video so far. One is deployment, which in turn created ports. Next, load balancer service. In this scenario, ports will be automatically deleted if you delete the load balancer service. So let's go ahead and delete the load balancer service. We can do that by running kubectl delete service followed by service name, which is my service. It confirms that service has been deleted successfully. Next, to make sure if there are any ports still running, we will run by kubectl get ports. From the above result, it is confirmed that there are no ports running right now. If you are wondering how deleting the service resulted in deleting ports, that's with the help of labels. Service we created has the labels of these ports and that's how it got deleted. So now, before we move to the next video, let's review the topics that we just discussed in the last few minutes as part of summary in next slide. Coming to the summary, in part one, we started this discussion by asking a couple of questions on why we need load balancer. Then we discussed about load balancer. That's about the part one. And now coming to the part two, we reviewed the load balancer demo we are about to perform in next video. So this will help you better understand when you watch actually doing it live on Kubernetes cluster. In this review demo, first I showed you what goes inside the load balancer manifest file. And then we created load balancer and displayed the objects it has created. After that, we tested one of the use case of load balancer service type by accessing the web app using load balancer external IP and it did worked. Finally, we cleaned up everything what we have created and coming up next load balancer demo video. In that demo, we'll perform the exact steps that we just discussed in the review demo section on live Kubernetes cluster. Link to that video is provided in the description below. And finally, thank you so much for watching this and I hope to see you in the next video.